Welcome everybody. In this video we're going to make a live histogram in Excel 2010 of some data that come from a continuous distribution. I'm going to start with the spreadsheet that we had from the dice roll stuff from the previous uh, video on live histograms and what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the, the histogram that we've got here because we're going to need a new one and instead of rolling dice what we're going to imagine is that we're going to have five quizzes so let's do quiz so we've got quiz one and let's copy that across and make five quizzes so we're going to have five quizzes and we'll change our title here to be instead of dice roll table we'll call it quiz table Right, so we've got five quizzes, and then we, what we're going to do is uh, then convert our five quiz scores into a score out of a hundred. Okay, so our score, and we can maybe tidy that up and make it a little smaller. So our score is going to be the sum of all of those, but we need to get these working first. So the first thing we're going to do is use the function rand. What rand does is it generates a number greater than or equal to zero and less than one, and it's evenly distributed. And what I want to do is instead of from 0 to 1, I've got to go from 0 to 10. So I need to multiply it by 10 and then multiply it and then multiply. I need to copy it across for our five scores. And then here, instead of making the sum, what I want is I actually want the average of the five values. So if I left click drag across the five, I'll get the average. But that's a score between uh, 0 and 10. What I want is a score between 0 and 100. So if I multiply by 10, I get that. So this guy got uh, 64. Turns out this is a really hard test. Anyway, so highlight those five and then left double click on that corner and it fills in the whole table. Okay, so our histogram table, what I want to do is just trim off all that stuff. In fact, I'll trim off everything. We'll start from scratch. Sometimes it's a good idea to do that because trying to reuse things sometimes is just a pain. So the first row is going to be like a starter row and it's going to be 0 and 0. Oh, and some of course should have a different name. It should be uh, score. So there we go, score. And the first row is kind of a dummy row and then I'm going to have two rows to go with uh, the first bin that we're going to store numbers for in the table. Now what I want to do is insert a new column here and then put it in with a cell style of heading and I want to type in the word bin and what I want to do, I'm just going to double click to make it wider and the bin's going to be 5, I decided 5 is a good number for this particular one and the score here will actually be the one above, so equals 0 and then the next value under that will be equals the one above plus the bin size and I want that to be an absolute address so I hit F4 and get the dollars so that's good. Now what we have is the tricky bit we want to do our uh, thing where we count the number of occurrences of the score between any score between 0 and 5 over here and to do that there's a function called count ifs and you can see it down here if I double click it inserts that and if I click on the insert function icon, we can get the criteria range. So let's just move that over here. Criteria range, and I can click here. There we go. But I want it to go to 6002, just like the last one, because that's how big our table is. Hit F4, hit F4 to make it an absolute address. Then I want to hit that to go back. And our criteria, and this is going to be kind of tricky, our criteria, we need to put the in quotes. So we have to put open quote and then greater than or equal to, oh, greater than didn't come out, greater than or equal to, equal to, unquote, and we want it to be greater than or equal to this number here. But to make that work I have to type in ampersand and then click on the cell. So that's our greater than or equal to for this bin that we're working on, the one from 0 to 5. And then the next one is the range criteria, the criteria range are the same as before. So we'll do that, put in 6002, and then we hit F4 and F4 for the front one. And so that should work, click that. And then our criteria are that we want it to be, and again we need to use these quotes, quote, greater than, quote, 
and we need ampersand before we click on the cell and the cell that we're going to click on is this one here for 5 so we want it to be less than oh less than less than so less than less than 5 and the ampersand click on there and it has to be less than 5 so it's greater than or equal to 0 and less than 5 so that's our count if thing and it'll only count them if they're in that range and it turns out there are none in this table that actually have that what I want to do here this is the second one for the same bin I'm just going to make it equal to the previous value and I'll talk about why when we get the graph up okay so now we have our first uh, bin and what I want to do is copy this down to fill in the table so here we go that's 90 I need to go to 100 so I only want the first 100 so let's hit delete and then I want to plot this to see what it looks like so let's plot that insert a chart we'll do scatter and I'll do straight lines and you'll see we get a nice histogram but before I talk about it let's change it we want to change it to a nicely formatted one here's our markers only template from the first uh, video so I click that hit OK that formats the graph nicely but we're back to markers again so I change type again and change it to lines click OK so now I have a nicely formatted graph let's let's just tidy it up I'm going to tidy up the axis titles and the numbers so we got score out of a hundred and the y-axis is going to be frequency F and I want that to be italics okay and now the x-axis I just want to tidy up okay so now I have a nice nicely formatted x-axis with the numbers and the fives in here as well and now oh and I need a title let's put a nice title in and we don't need the series label because there's only one series in the graph um, oh this x-axis only needs to be up to a hundred so that tidies that up a little bit so now let's talk about the histogram and how it works so let's just scoot over a little bit and I'm going to move the graph over here so we can see it while we're talking about it so let's have a look at 30 this bottom part the left hand edge of the 30 uh, bin see here it is is a point 30 comma 241 so that's right there 30 241 and the next one is 30 365 which is right there so the two values for 30 give you this vertical step right the riser of the step the next value has the same y value right it's it's equal to the value above right that's what it is and the thing about that is that we've moved across to the other side of the step so we've moved along the tread up to there and then we go up to the next value of 564 so that's why we need two values so that we can get this nicely stepped histogram okay so just to show you how this works let's hit delete a couple of times show you that it's live so that's our histogram of continuous value data if you want to use this for some other uh, continuous value data and do a histogram the bin size is something that you might need to change the starting value is something that you probably will also need to change and uh, with those two you can make it start and be any size you like but you also might need to make it longer and if you need to do that you need to highlight two things and then drag it down right so you get more things but in this case we only need up to a hundred so I'm gonna delete that let's go back move our graph over so basically we're done um, let's just check to make sure we did what our plan was our plan was to make a live histogram of continuous data and so I'm going to post this video on the website and together with that I'm going to post um, a value of a value I'm going to post the uh, spreadsheet and I'll put it um, you'll find it at the top of this page there'll be a link to the videos